Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This may be a new commandment, but it's not the first time these words have been said to love one another. In fact, in Leviticus 19.18, God says, You shall not take vengeance or bear any grudge against the sons of your own people. But you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Now, I'm sure you've read all of the 613 uh, Levitical codes, right? If you haven't, you must. Anyway, did you catch those words, take any grudge against the sons of your own people? It seems like maybe that message was a little bit insular. In other words, it was for the people around them, not everybody. Well... When Jesus comes, he redefines who our neighbor is, right? He also shows us what true love is. Uh, and that way he says, I give you a new commandment. And his life pretty much makes a statement of what that means to love one another. Uh, I love the uh, Paul's message says, wives be uh, subject to your husbands. In other words, honey, bring me the slippers. But when he, he says in the very next sentence, Husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church. And you know what that means. Be ready to die. Okay. So Jesus gives us a new commandment. How can I shed much light on that, you're saying? Uh, pretty simple, right? Love one another. la di da di da Let's face it. That's the hardest thing to do in life, right? To love your neighbor day in and day out. People have told me I'm picky. And somebody in my family has commented, yes, he's picky, but he's also peculiar. Well, I own that. I am picky and peculiar. In fact, when somebody invites me to eat, it's rare that I say, just pick a place. It doesn't matter to me. Wherever you want to go. I'm like, no, 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 no. What do you have in mind? And then I'll let you know. Right? Well, you might say, I own that. And you might say that uh, in some ways, I try to live into what Plato said. Does anybody know what Plato said? One of his most famous quotes. One of the most famous quotes ever in the world. Know thyself. You ever heard it? Know thyself. I think it's probably helpful if you want to grow in life, if you want to succeed, if you want to push yourself, you know, to help people, then you better know your limitations and your strengths, right? Yeah. Well... If you want to be able to help your family, your spouse, your children, you better know what your strengths and weaknesses are. So this is the first uh, premise. You must get a grip on yourself, right? Figure out who you are. Go find yourself or something. I don't know. But in your mind, you're a great person. I'm going to put this kind of bluntly, but who looks in the mirror and says, I suck? No, you, who, who does that, really? You look in the mirror and think, oh, man, oh, I'm great, right? <laughs> or something like that. Well, to be honest with you, you have to have friends to point out your foibles, right? Friends, family, children, whatever, spouses. <laughs> it's helpful. It's helpful to know where you fall short. And boy, do I do it all day long. Uh Think of all the great people in history who uh, sought advice or did not. Those that ran solo or did not. Leaders in history. Think of uh, Hitler as one who, uh, it seems, didn't take good advice all the time because one of the last tactical moves he made was to go into Russia. Like, I'm conquering Russia. And you know how that ended up. Ain't, ain't, no, ain't no good. No good. He, 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 that, that was the beginning of the end when he didn't take advice it seems to some extent so this knowing yourself is the key to helping others it's the key because you have to know what you need to be able to do it and what your strengths and weaknesses are a family friend of mine put this on Facebook he quoted know thyself but he didn't use K-N-O-W he put N-O, know thyself. Now, what does that mean? 
saying no to yourself, but yes to others. Now, how hard is that? Really? Saying no to yourself and yes to others. That's what Jesus is getting at in this second commandment. Loving one another. He says, just as I loved you. Now, how hard is that? Being willing to take a bullet. Being willing to die. So, saying no to yourself and yes to other people is the key tenet of loving your neighbor. But it's the singularly hardest thing to do, right? Is to always love the neighbor. How do you do that? You relate to them with love, with dignity, with respect, with peace, and goodwill. The contact list goes on and on of who that might be. Homeless people, people with mental problems, family members that aggravate the heck out of you. Um, your neighbor who constantly, purposely puts trash three feet on your side of the property line. Um, family members that push our limits. Moochers. I keep going, I mean, really. You, you see the list is everybody that we should love. Dignity, respect, and goodwill. Always wanting what's best for that person is loving that neighbor. No matter how aggravating they are or how dangerous they may seem. How do you put this into practice? How do you put this into practice? How often do we say to a friend who royally messes up, he or she got what they deserve? Surely you haven't said that, right? We've all said that, you know, and then you want to take the words back. I shouldn't have said that, right? They got what they deserve. Well, that's the antithesis of the message today. If you're still awake, it's not they got what they deserve. When the South would say, bless his soul, but he's such a lunatic, you know? That's another wrong way to put it. <laughs> like, bless him, God. I want what's best for him always or her. It's not, it's not the other way. No, no, no. I'm preaching to myself always. Jesus says we should love them no matter what. He doesn't say enable them or make them think they're great when they're not, but to love them as a person. However, however we can grasp this message is that we're all of the same ilk. I love that word, I-L-K. Okay. All of us, no matter where we came from or who we are, we are all of the same ilk. We're all the neighbor. We're all that to God. I'm going to tell you this story not because I'm so great or something so good I've done. Because it convicts me. And it's usually once a week. I walk into the store. I'm not going to say where it is because you probably know it. But there's a homeless guy always blocking the front door. I was like, ah. I can't get away from him. He's right there. So, and he's a nice man. And he's got all of his belongings right there. And he always says, Father, can you help me out? And I say, I'll be back with you. I'll get some change. So I come back. I hand him enough for a couple of lunches. Because I feel convicted when I see the guy. Because sometimes it's raining, sometimes it's snowing, and he's right there in the elements. And I always say, get to the shelter tonight, my friend. But when I hand him that money, he blesses me. He says, bless you, Father. May God bless you today. And I cross myself. Because I take that as a great blessing. It's coming from friend to priest. I've been blessed by him in that way. He didn't have to do that. And I don't think he's doing it just because I handed him something. It's deeper. It's deeper. Because how many people say to you on a daily basis, weekly basis, may God bless you this day? They don't, typically. This guy does. So, I can't, couldn't get away from him. Sometimes now I look forward to seeing him because I know he's going to bless me. Right? Everybody needs a blessing. Surely. But I don't look forward to the fact that he's not in a home. So. Oh, boy, boy. Um, so that's the interior message of this 
new commandment today that I thought I had nothing to say about until I got into it. Um, it's to say, in O, thyself. Know thyself. This is the thing as we close this. Um, Augustine said this about love, St. Augustine. Love forever seeks what it has found, not to have it, but to have it always. You with me? Not to hold on to it and grab it and take control of it like I do, like many people do, but to have it always, to have it in you and flowing through you. My friends, this is the key message, looking past yourself today. This is what Jesus did. How will you get your hands dirty this week? How will you get involved? The freak at work who everybody hates, how will you react to them, him or her this week? For looking past yourself as best you can, then you will surely love your neighbor and live into this second and great commandments. The commandment, love thyself. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that if you love one another, just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. May God give us grace this week to pull that off in some way. Amen. Amen. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.